So did you know that that building right there is a nuclear reactor? No idea. A reactor? It's a nuclear reactor. In the middle of a city? Boston, Massachusetts, a city of over 600,000 located in the northeastern United States. Its citizens go about their day in blissful ignorance of the tiny nuclear reactor sitting right in their backyard for the past 55 years. This lack of knowledge is due to the fact that the reactor, located at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Cambridge, is a research reactor and does not produce power like the reactors at Plymouth's Pilgrim Generating Station just 35 miles to the south. Even though the reactor sits just yards from the major thoroughfare, most passers-by have no knowledge of its existence. So do you know what that dome is behind you right there? I don't, I just know it's part of MIT. You know that's a nuclear reactor? Really? I didn't know that. What do you feel about a nuclear reactor being in the heart of Boston? A little nervous, considering all the terrorists and stuff like that. So do you know what that big blue building is behind you right there? I do not. It's a nuclear reactor. How do you feel about that? I didn't know that. I don't know why they would have a nuclear reactor in the middle of a city. The nuclear research program at MIT got its start in 1951, when Manson Benedict became the first professor of nuclear engineering at the university. In 1954, the launch of Project Separation began to explore alternative processes of recovering uranium. Construction of the reactor began in 1956, with the reactor first going critical in 1958. The reactor was designed by Theodore Thompson to be used for research purposes, and this is what it is still used for to this day. It may seem complicated, but how a nuclear reactor works can be broken down quite easily. A nuclear reactor creates energy by turning water into steam. This steam powers a turbine which is connected to an electromagnet called a generator. This generator is what produces the electricity. Afterwards, the steam is converted back into water to be returned to the reactor core. The reactor core contains fuel rods, water, and control rods. Each fuel rod contains pellets of uranium dioxide. Nuclear fission occurs inside of the fuel rods. The chain reaction of splitting the atoms releases heat, turning the water into steam, and powering the turbine. To prevent overheating or to shut down the reactor, the control rods, made of a material that absorbs the small atomic particles, are inserted into the reactor core, which stops the nuclear reaction. So what is the difference between a research reactor and a nuclear power station? Typically, research reactors are much smaller than power generating reactors. This is because research reactors are generally only used for research in the fields of medicine and nuclear physics and to train new reactor operators. MIT, the City of Boston, Cambridge Fire Department, the Massachusetts Emergency Management Office, and FEMA all declined to participate in this documentary. The only organization that would provide information was the Union of Concerned Scientists and Dr. Edwin Lyman. The only catch was he was located in Washington, D.C., so the film crew boarded a bus for the 10-hour ride to Washington to find out as much information as they could. Most nuclear power plants around the world do not use materials that could be used directly in nuclear weapons. They use what's called low-enriched uranium as fuel. However, there are some research reactors like the MIT research reactor that use highly enriched uranium as a fuel. Highly enriched uranium is the same material that's used in, in the U.S. nuclear arsenal and other nuclear weapons arsenals around the world. After the accidents with the Chernobyl reactor in the Ukraine in 1986, and more recently with the Fukushima reactor in Japan in 2011, many people are questioning the safety of nuclear power plants close to population centers. 
The nuclear accident at Fukushima is considered a level 7 disaster, the highest measurement on the international nuclear and radiological event scale maintained by the International Atomic Energy Agency. After the accident, an area of 20 kilometers, or about 12 miles around the damaged nuclear plant, had to be evacuated due to the high levels of radiation. This area is still uninhabitable and will most likely remain uninhabitable for many years to come. The reactor at Fukushima is of the same design as the research reactor at MIT, and even after the accident in Japan, there were no changes made to the safety procedures at the reactor. Even though the MIT reactor operates around uh, 6 megawatts compared to power reactors, which can operate up around 1,000 megawatts, that even a 6 megawatt reactor has an enormous amount of radioactive material in the core when it's operating. And if there were a substantial melting of the core of a reactor like the MIT research reactor and a breach of the confinement, you could have significant radioactive exposures to the public uh, several miles away. If the event actually occurred, the, they would have to be evacuated and there might be restrictions on re-entry. Unfortunately, under current federal government regulations, research reactors are not required to notify local residents of their existence and location or create evacuation plans in case of an accident. If one were to occur, it would be up to local government officials to come up with a plan on the spot. And what the NRC would do at that point was say, okay, well, something happened and you're going to have to evacuate even though we never even told you there was a reactor there in the first place. Suddenly you need to get out of here in four hours. What would that do to the traffic in Boston? So uh, it, it's just not logical and one would hope that in the wake of Fukushima the NRC would be reevaluating these issues and they are for power reactors but it's really off their radar screen and that's uh, again a big loophole. Is nuclear power the way of the future, as society once thought? Nuclear energy is a potentially beneficial force in the world. Um, it certainly has the potential to provide a lot of electricity. However, it has so many safety and security liabilities that have not been dealt with. After the accident in Fukushima, Japan shut down all 50 nuclear reactors until the numerous safety concerns could be addressed. This exemplifies the microcosm of our species. It takes an accident to show us that these dangers are real and that something needs to be done. Is that the destiny of us as a species? To hold what we know to specific boundaries or to educate others on the potential risks so that we can all be aware? <laughs>